Hi, welcome to our Friday Trends Special. And you know what trends are special for me? Eat, drink, and be merry. A salute. Hey, here we are at the Mohegan. That's right, you see our Trends in the News broadcasts. I'm behind the bar over there, but there's a lot more at the Mohegan than just that bar. And I'm with Marcus Giuliano from Aroma Time, just in time, man. <laughs> this is the guy years and years and years and years ago, and it was just beginning, he was on trend, bringing it fresh, local, clean food before most people have even heard of it. And he has a great restaurant down in Ellenville, New York, Aroma Time, where you have the time of your life and the best food that you could eat anywhere, any place around the world. And he's here today with us at the Mohegan to talk about uh, doing a little cooking. We're going to talk food. We're going to talk food. We're going to talk, uh, I'm going to show you a little cooking technique here. And I'm really excited to be here. Oh, it's great to have you. Excellent. So what are we going to do today? So it's the middle of the winter right now, and a lot of people are concerned with where their food comes from. I'm sure you go to the store and you're faced with choices. Are you buying fresh broccoli? Where's it from? Is it organic? Is it labeled organic? Is it really organic? Is it California organic? Is it imported organic? I'm sure all these questions a lot of viewers have, like where is this really coming from? How long did it take to get to me? Well, that's exactly what goes through my mind. I only eat organic. I only buy organic. And when I go to the, the health food store and I see hey, peppers, I love peppers and eggs, you know, like all Italians. You know. Anyway, you know, I always look at the label. Where's it from? And if it's from out of the country, I don't buy it because I don't know how long it took to get there. And I don't even know if it's organic. Who so can I don't you buy trust? Any, I, don't buy, I don't buy anything that's not stamped USA. And I, and I, I don't like to buy things out of season, you know, so. And we think we're forced to just because of what we're taught in cooking and what a meal should be and because things look pretty in the store. So like they, we gravitate towards those things. And we're gonna talk about carrots today. And a lot of people will just say, well, gee, carrots, we're gonna glorify carrots. Now, are these, these are, I think they're special carrots because they're local. They're grown with love. Wow. They're heirloom carrots, and you can see they're all different colors wow. here. Um, now, you don't have to get an heirloom rainbow carrot, but wherever you are in the country, you can probably have access to locally grown carrots. And in the wintertime, there's probably an abundance of these. And the nice thing about them is carrots, even if you buy the top of the line carrots, they're still a bargain. Because carrots are something that doesn't really carry a premium price tag. Wow. So you can eat on a budget, you can eat local, you can eat organic, and I'm going to show you how to do that with a simple ingredient like carrots. All right. So I'm also going to accompany this with a couple other things that I really like as well. So we're going to roast these carrots today. And the key to roasting the carrots, the key to cooking any carrot, is cooking it long enough. A lot of people will cook vegetables al dente, to the crunchy, to the bite, little firm texture. Certain vegetables should not be al dente, and carrots are one of those. Carrots, a lot of chefs are guilty of this. They need to cook the carrot long enough so it's tender. And it brings out the flavor. It brings out the flavor, it concentrates the sugars in them. These are loaded with all types of natural sugars. And once you cook and condense those, it's great. Now, I'm not saying don't eat a raw carrot because they're great snacks or wonderful snacks. But if you're sitting down at a dinner table and it's on your plate, Raw carrots are not the ideal way to, to construct a meal, unless you're a raw foodist, then that's a different story. So, these purple carrots are just amazing. Look at the color in there. Wow. Look at that. I mean, these are just... Yeah, I never saw anything. you never seen anything, no, right? No. And these are, these are fif local. 15 minutes away. 15 minutes 15 away. 15 minutes away. Where, 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 whereabouts? These are in northern, uh, northern Hudson Valley on the east, uh, west side of the river. So I typically never peel carrots. I'm not a fan of taking off uh, or refining food if it doesn't need to be. Right, so There's a lot wash, of, so just, wash them. just wash them. There's a lot of nutrients. 
We all know nutrients in the skins and towards the edge. As long as it's properly washed, especially if you're eating it raw, and I would not eat, I would just not pick up a carrot in the store, from the store and start chomping away on it without eating, without washing it properly. So that's- Are that's, you washing with a brush or? You, what, you, what, a brush is good to scrub it. That's what I usually do. Um, there's a couple other ways to really wash. You can buy a, a vegetable wash spray and go to the organic store and buy that. Food grade hydrogen peroxide diluted is a great way to make sure you're really killing anything. Oh, wow. Part of the problem with, with food is, any of this can happen with dried figs, it can happen with almonds, Brazil nuts. You're buying food that's sitting in a warehouse somewhere. You have no control over what, what pests, animals are in there. You, you have no control in the fields, how it's getting picked, uh, the sanitation in the fields, and you have no control at the store, who's putting it on the shelf, who's touching it with their hands, who before you walked by and sneezed on it, decided to put it back. So all these are just a breeding ground for bacteria and germs. So properly washing, what I like to do is I like to take things home wash them before I even put them into the refrigerator so I know everything in my refrigerator is properly sanitized, properly cleaned, oh. properly taken care of. Then when you want an apple, you go grab it and it's, there's no worry about washing something and, and missing something on you. Soak everything ahead of time, so dry when, it. So when you're soaking it, what you're talking about using hydrogen peroxide. How do you, what do you do? You take a bucket of, of water uh, or fill your sink up, make sure your sink's really clean, uh, fill it up, soak everything, pour a couple caps, uh, take, check the dilution ratios of the hydrogen peroxide, dilute it, put it into your food grade hydrogen peroxide that is, and soak up, uh, let the vegetable sit in there for a few minutes. Then you rinse it really good, strain it, and then soak it again to wash everything off. And of course you can get a brush when, when you and scrub. Soak it, when you soak it again, is it still in the peroxide or is it clean? It's clean water that clean. time, okay. clean water that time. And you can take a brush and you can scrub. That's and there's what I usually do. Yeah. And there's all, so then now everything going to your refrigerator is, is clean. All right. So uh, now another local ingredient that I love is sunflower oil. Cooking oil can be very tricky. You have, you have to smell this. So do you like sunflower? Sunflower seeds? Nah, I don't need that much. It's very clean smell. Clean, very, it's... Yeah. It's like eating sunflowers. There's a lot of sunflower in there. There's a lot to be said for cooking oils and uh, what's the right temperature, what's the right oil. A lot, of people, a lot of people are told to cook with olive oil just because we've been taught by chefs and because the industry tells us that olive oil is healthy, which by the way, olive oil can be very healthy because it's a fruit. And when you get fresh pressed fruit juice like olive oil, it's loaded with polyphenols. It's loaded with a ton of great constituents. But as soon as you pour it into a pan and turn heat, heat on it, yeah, it changes, yeah. it changes everything. So picking a high heat resistant oil is key. I like coconut oil. I like macadamia nut oil, avocado seed oil. Uh, but those are, a lot of those are really pricey. A lot of people say, well, gee, Marcus, that's a little bit out of my price range, or I can't use coconut oil for spaghetti and meatballs. I can't saute my garlic for an Italian dish. <laughs> and I understand that. <laughs> I, I know. I, <laughs> I mean, I live on olive oil. And the funny thing is coconuts do grow in southern Italy. Really? So yeah. You have the palm trees, you have the coconuts. Yeah. So this is a local sunflower oil that is purely unrefined. Uh, when you go to the store, you're going to look at oils and say, okay, this oil has a high heat resistance, but they're not going to tell you the seven processes of how that oil got into the bottle of the degumming, the, the, ble the bleaching, the deodorizing, the high heat process, making it rancid, bringing back the color to neutral. It's a whole disaster once you start looking into wow. how oil is treated. This I've been to the place, I've seen what they do. They take sunflower seeds and put it through this extruding device, which basically wrings out the oil, the oil drops out, the sunflower meal pops out of the other end and it goes for cattle, it goes for chickens, it goes for, for livestock feed. And inside that mechanism, that extruding mechanism, it's cooled, so it never reaches past 110 degrees. Now, the average oil when you go into a store to buy a bottle of oil has been heated to 500 degrees. Wow. And it's, it, they have to so chemically alter that and refine it that it looks clear so you don't think anything's wrong with it. And everything's been stripped out of it at that point. So, for example, if I buy olive oil, sometimes I see it in a bottle and it's very cloudy. 
Is that a better one than the, than the clear ones? So cloudy, it, that's going to be more of a sign of more, more unfiltered. Or if it's cold, it's solidifying. Don't worry about the cloudiness at all. Um, I would actually look for something that's a little more on the cloudy side because I know that it's less refined. Okay. Now, olive oil is a whole tricky thing to buy anyway because is it really olive oil? It's one of the most fraudulent food items I out hear there. I about that, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, olive oil costs more than gasoline. It costs more than wine sometimes. Uh, you To properly produce olive oil and put it on a shelf for retail, if you look at it in the gallon size, you're at $100 a gallon. But they put it in smaller bottles so you don't think of it when you break it out with $100 a gallon. And when something costs $100 a gallon, the fraudsters come out. The con artists come out. The people who want to... Uh, uh, make a little extra money on something that big, they're, they're going to be out there. And some of the largest olive oil producers in the world, people that you walk into the store and you see their olive oil tins and jars lined up, they don't even own an olive tree. They're buying it from other people that might be buying it from other people. And there's so many different levels of olive oil by the time it goes into the bottle and goes onto the shelf that the person selling it may not be the crook. It may be the guy who bought it from the farmer in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Spain, in Greece, in Italy. First of all, Italy far exceeds uh, exporting uh, olive oil can what they can actually produce from their own olive trees in Italy. So they're all getting shipped in. A lot of this stuff gets shipped in on tanker trucks. It's waiting in the ocean. Yeah. It goes to the processors. People have a love affair with Italian food, and I don't blame them. Hey, <laughs> Giuliano, <laughs> Salenti, of course. <laughs> but globalization has forced some of these companies to cut corners and bring in ingredients from other parts of the world and slap that Italian label on it. Well, I always read the label to see where the olives come from, so I don't know if they're lying on the label. But a lot of the labels, they, they do put where the olive oil comes from. They Tunisia. do. They do. They yeah. will put that. And by law, they're supposed to be transparent. Yeah. But honestly, if there's tankers of olive oil sitting out in the ocean yeah. getting ready to go to one of these big companies and they think it's from Tunisia, but they mix in some stuff from Egypt, hazelnut oil from Egypt into the mix, it's hard to be transparent. Well, again, I'll see a bottle and it'll say, well, as we used to say, bottle, <laughs> where, I, where I grew up. And it, and it says, you know, olives, you know, Italian olives produced in Italy. So, again, I don't know if they're mm -hmm. lying or not, but... You want them to be honest. We yeah. hope that they're honest. And sometimes that's really what we have to go by is really just our, our trust and our faith in what's on the label. So we're going to cut these carrots up and I'm going to toss them with a little bit of this oil, just enough to glaze them. And we're going to put these in the oven. It's going to take about 45 minutes. Depending on how accurate your oven is and how, of course, in a convection oven, they go much quicker. And we're going to toss these in a little bit of the oil here, put it in a pan. And I like to cook in pans that you put on the stove and that can go in the oven. So no plastic handle. Oh, it's a nice pretty plastic, heavy pan. Nice heavy, yeah. And this is a stainless steel pan. Yeah. There's no, no aluminum cooking yeah, surface. Yeah, no, no, no. And a lot of people still are hooked on aluminum. And there's a lot of issues with putting product on aluminum oh, yeah, no, and then I, eating it. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, it's, it's not, it's no, not recommended. Out. Yeah, it pulls out. And also there's these other things too, these people that buy these pans that have that non-stick stuff on it. Non-stick, yeah, the Teflon. I, yeah, I mean, if you hear of any, what is it, cancer is the word? <laughs> <laughs> cancer is the word. Yeah. So how much are you putting on? I'm putting maybe two teaspoons. And then I just want to coat these really nice. And the, I, the nice idea about this pan again, because it's a metal handle, it's not going to melt in the oven. Yeah. And I can take this from the oven, provided I have a rag and I don't burn myself, and put this right on a burner and then finish my oh, cooking if great. something else needs to go yeah, in. I don't have anything like that. So we're going to put this in the oven. When it comes out of the oven, we're going to talk vinegar. I have a beautiful sherry vinegar, 12-year-old uh, sherry vinegar. And I have some local apple vinegar from right up the road, right near the carrots were oh, grown. I have yeah. some apple vinegar. Well, Hudson Valley's apple oh, country, boy. Apple country, yeah. it's, it's amazing. A this was the third Dutch settlement, you know, Kingston, where, we, where we, you know, they came here because there was a reason for it. The, the richness of the Catskill and the, the Hudson Valley is some of the, the richest in the world. The soil quality oh. here, the culture here, the great chefs that we have in our region that, that can help portray uh, our story about food is amazing, and we're right near New York City, and uh, it's just it's I'm 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 
I think I'm blessed to be here in the Hudson oh, Valley. Oh, I love it. I could live anywhere I want in the world. And this is so we're going to go to the oven. I'm going to put this in. When it comes out, we're going to take a little bit of vinegar. And one of my favorite ingredients, one of my favorite sweeteners is palm sugar. Have you had, have you oh, had palm, yeah. palm sugar? This is an interesting product. Uh, it comes from uh, near Indonesia and that part of the Pacific Rim. And what they do is, so we have maple syrup here, which is running now. A lot of maple syrup people are out there tapping their trees, especially yesterday, 50 degrees out in the cold nights. But they have coconut trees, of course, palm trees. And when that blossom comes out, it runs a sap. That sap is like our maple syrup. You can collect the sap, dry it, and pulverize it. And you can come up with this beautiful brown substance that's sweet, loaded with minerals. Absolutely. Loaded with minerals. Wow. And it's just, wow. it's an amazing. The flavor. I've never had this. And it's not quite as sweet as sugar. Mm. But here's the most important thing to know. Because well, people are going to tell you, oh, this sugar is better than other sugars. And this sugar, sugar is not meant to be abused. It's meant to be used properly. And just because something has more nutrients or it's raw, doesn't give you a license to just put it on everything and do everything. This is a sweetener. Um, it's semi-refined. But if you do use a dry sweetener, this is one that I would go to 100% first. I buy the, the raw sugar, you know. And so every day when I have a cup of espresso, I have that tiny, only a tiny little bit I just put in there. That's all the sugar I have in that, in that field. But this is, wow, what a flavor. Excellent. So let's go get this in the oven. Okay. All right, so the carrots are now out of the oven. You can see some browning on here. And the true test, the test is just take your finger and just poke them and These are nice and soft. You can see, wow, nice and tender. So we... Now we want to put this on a burner, on a flame. And these are not going to need much sweetener at all. And again, this is that palm sugar. Just a little bit to coat it. Now to balance that out, I have that cooking to balance it out. I'm just gonna give it a couple drops of vinegar. And that makes a beautiful glaze. And that's it. Local heirloom rainbow roasted carrots, a touch of sherry vinegar, and a touch of palm sugar. And now it's time to eat these. The great thing about these is you can save them in your refrigerator and they can reheat, save, make enough for two, three, four days, uh, or make them in advance so you don't have to be in the kitchen cooking for your dinner party. You can actually be out and enjoying your company and your guests while these are uh, made the day before. Sure, so great.